Oke. Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. A very good day to everyone. Okay, so today we discuss on the introduction to lamina and turbulent flow, part 1. So in this topic, we have three parts. Okay, so part 1 will discuss on the right not number. So basically, me as the presenter today, uh, my name is Dr. Zainal Helmi bin Solihin from Faculty of Mechanical Engineering, UITM Shah Alam. Okay, so the objective of this topic is are to understand lamina and turbulent flow in pipes and the analysis of fully developed flow. Secondly, is to calculate the major and minor losses associated with the pipe flow in the piping networks. And lastly, is to determine the pumping power requirement so we have three objective in this topic and we will discuss uh, detail in the next slide okay so we have uh, six content in this chapter so part one will discuss on the introduction lamina and turbulent flow an analysis of flow in a circular pipes. So for part two, we discuss on the pressure drop and heat loss in a circular pipe, and also turbulent flow solution in pipes. So for part three, we discuss on the minor losses in pipe system and piping networks, which is serial, parallel, or multi-pipe system. As per introduction, what is a fluid mechanics? So fluid mechanics talks about science, science that deals with behavior of fluid at a rest or in motion, and the interaction of fluid with solid or other fluids at the boundaries. So basically, all about fluid, liquid, we are talking in fluid mechanics. So the behavior of fluid and also uh, any other liquid in various state condition, we will discuss on fluid mechanics. So basically, it divided into three areas. The first is in static, fluid static, fluid kinematics, and also fluid dynamics. What is a fluid static. So basically fluid static studies the fluid at rest which is the fluid is not in motion. So static is in static condition which is no motion for the fluid. For fluid kinematics it study fluid in motion where the, the pressure force are not considered. Basically, we, uh, we are neglecting the pressure force. Fluid dynamics, on the other hand, study the fluid in motion and the pressure force are considered. So, liquid or gas flow to a pipes or ducts and it's commonly used in heating and cooling application and fluid distribution networks. So basically, the fluid will be transferred using a pipe or rectangular duct or whatsoever means. Basically, normally we will find it in terms of part and ducting. The fluid in such applications is usually forced to flow by a fan or pump through a flow section. So basically the force induce the flow normally is a fan or if we don't find a fan usually we use a pump. For a gas normally we use a compressor. So for a liquid normally we use a pump to force the fluid to 
flow so basically all in flow we have a friction so very be careful with the friction so basically the friction is uh, directly related to a pressure drop and heat loss during flow through a pipe and ducting so basically uh, you all have learned in uh, Newton's law so basically in third Newton, Newton's law we, uh, Newton's law talks about friction so basically force minus friction force okay is equals to mass times uh, acceleration okay so basically the friction here is we are considered in a third newton law so the pressure drop is then used to determine the pumping power requirement in order to get the desired output so we must know how much the pressure will drop and the heat heat required to pump the fluid so this is the example application area of the fluid so basically starting from the natural so this is the nature okay and we use a ship to navigate to transport all right and also pumping the pipeline and also some of the in the power plant and also in the green energy here we look into the wind turbine also in healthcare whereby our vein and our blood we consider as a fluid and also the power plant so example fluid in Malaysia so the electric power also use a fluid for example in hydroelectric power plant so basically this is the example of hydroelectric power plant in Malaysia so we have numerous power plant in Malaysia starting from Sultan Azhar Shah in Perak up to Tenom in Sabah so the latest one uh, the popular one will be Kenya okay so basically uh, this is the uh, example of hydro power plant so we have the turbine here the generator the water uh, pressure difference of water will be used as to enhance the fluid flow and the fluid flow will generate uh, will move the turbine and the generator will gather the power from the fluid flow and inducing electric power inside the transformer so basically this is the example of how electric being generated from a hydroelectric flow in a part in terms of part duct and also conduit are usually used interchangeably flow section so basically we have circular flow normally it's a four pipes and it use a liquid and a non-circular cross section which is ducting normally for a gas and we can find it for it uh, for air conditioning system for our class for our uh, building so normally for uh, non-circular cross-section ducting uh, we have in in a rectangular shape so pipes can withstand large pressure difference between the inside and the outside without undergoing significant distortion but for ducting 
used in heating and cooling system of building where the pressure difference is relatively small and the manufacturing and installation costs are much lower compared to piping and the available space is limited for ducting work. So theoretical solutions are obtained only for a few simple cases such as fully developed lamina flow in a circular pipe. Therefore, we must rely on experimental results and empirical relation for most fit for problem rather than close from analytical solution. So basically the experimental result which is under carefully controlled laboratory condition and that no two systems are exactly alike. We must not be so naive as to view the result obtained as the exact condition. So basically that is only on the experimental result. So an error of 10% or more in friction factor calculated using the relation in this chapter is the norm rather than exception. So basically there is many uh, numerous assumptions we are dealing in calculation. So basically the assumption is cannot be void therefore the that's why exception is is being used flow in a pipe the fluid velocity in a pipe change from zero at the surface because the non-slip condition so basically at the surface we assume at the zero and the maximum at the center so this is the profile so basically at the surface this is surface this is the internal flow internal flow of a fluid so basically in the middle is the higher velocity of fluid whereas near to the wall is much lower and probably near to zero in fluid flow it is convenient to work with an average or mean velocity which remain constant in incompressible flow when the cross section of the pipe is constant so basically if you have something like this the flow the velocity inside the pipes are higher at the middle but much lower in the near to the wall so we take the average velocity so the mean velocity in heating and cooling relation may change somewhat because of change in density with temperature but in practice we evaluate the fluid properties at some average temperature and treat them as constant because there is there are too many variables and temperature uh, varies inside the fluid motion so that's why we take average temperature so the convenience of working with constant properties usually more than justify the slight loss in accuracy the value of mean velocity is determined from the requirement that the conservation of mass principle be satisfied so basically for mass flow rate m dot so it's equal to the density rho density times velocity mean velocity the area of the section cross sectional all right so basically the units for m dot is kg per second the unit is in kg per second the density in kg per meter cube whereas the cross-sectional area is meter square classification of fluid flow there is a wide variety, wide variety of fluid flow problems encountered in practice and it is usually convenient to classify them 
on the basis of some common characteristic to make it feasible to study them in a group. So, there are many ways to classify the fluid flow problems and here we present some general categories. First, we call it as a viscous, viscous in viscous region of flow, viscous kelikatan in Malay, in viscous zero kelikatan. Number two, internal versus external flow. Number three, compressible versus incompressible flow. Number four, lamina versus turbulent flow. So this is the figure. So we have a fluid flow. We have in viscid and viscous. So for viscous flow, we have lamina and turbulent. And also in fluid flow, we have compressible and incompressible. And in fluid flow also, we have internal flow and external flow. So basically, uh, in this topic, we discuss more on the internal flow, internal flow, lamina and turbulent, viscous. Okay, so we focus on viscous and inviscous region of flow. So region where frictional effects are significant are called viscous region. So they are usually close to solid surface. So basically, on the viscous region, viscous region near to the surface. So assume this is the flow and this is your surface wall of the part. So near to the wall, so the flow we call it as a viscous flow. So this is the region of in viscid flow region where frictional force are small compared to initial or pressure or pressure force are called in viscid so basically in the middle we call it as a in viscid flow so viscous versus in viscid flow sorry viscous versus in viscid region of flow when two fluid layer are moved relative to each other or a fluid flow through a solid surface surface a frictional friction force develop between them and the slower layer tries to slow down the fastest layer so this internal resistance to flow is called viscosity which is a measure of internal stickiness of the fluid so we have two types of viscosity. First, we call it as a dynamic viscosity, mu, and kinematic viscosity, v. So the dynamic viscosity, kg meter dot second, is internal resistance to flow, whereas kinematic viscosity is ratio of dynamic viscosity to density. So viscosity is caused by cohesive force forces between the molecules in liquid and by molecular collision in gases so there is no fluid with zero viscosity and thus all fluid flow involve viscous effect to some degree all right so basically flow in which the effect of viscosity are significant are called viscous, viscous flow however in many flow of practical interest, there are regions, typically regions not close to solid surface, where viscous forces are negligible because it's small compared to initial or pressure forces. So, neglecting the viscous term in, in such in viscid flow region greatly simplify the analysis without much loss in accuracy. Something like this. Near to the wall of pipe, so we have viscous flow region. And in the middle, we have in biscuit. If we assume that the wall, the distance is large enough, so the viscous flow region is small, much more smaller compared to in biscuit flow. So this viscous flow 
be can negligible because it so small compared to in bis in biscuit flow all right okay internal versus external flow in this chapter chapter we will focus on internal flow so in general a fluid flow is classified as being internal or external depend on whether the fluid is forced to flow in a confined channel or over a surface okay so basically this is the internal flow it's a flow over the surface so the flow of an unbound fluid over the surface such as plate a wire or a pipe is called external flow the flow in a pipe or duct in internal flow internal flow if the fluid is completely bound by solid surface so this pipe we call it as a solid surface water flow in a pipe for example is internal flow and the air flow over the exposed pipe during a windy day is called external flow so in this part internally we call it as a internal flow whereas the wind cross over the surface we call it as a external flow so the flow of fluid in a duct is called open channel flow if the duct is only partially filled with the fluid and there is a free surface the flow of water in a river and irrigation irrigation discharge are example of such flow so this is the example of external flow where you can see the flow around the surface compressible versus incompressible flow a flow is classified as compressible if the density remain clearly constant so the density is the main point here the liquid flow are typically incompressible gas flow are often compressible especially for high speed so Mach number is a good indicator of whether or not compressibly effect are important so Mach number is defined as the ratio of the speed of a body to the speed of sound in the surrounding medium or we can simply return as Mach number velocity divided by sound of speed so normally for incompressible flow we are talking in sorry incompressible flow we are talking in a uh, engine in general combustion engine whereby the flow the fluid or the gas or the air is normally being compressed so uh, normally a uh, flow inside a pipe or ducting normally we consider as incompressible flow so depend on the problem we are dealing with you must know either is a compressible or incompressible compressible is normally is in engine or internal combustion engine whereby incompressible normally flow in a pipe for flow over external flow and so on lamina versus turbulent flow so what is a lamina lamina is a flow that has smooth smooth streamlines very very low velocity and highly ordered motion whereby turbulent is flow has high velocity fluctuation and highly disordered motion transition is the flow fluctuate between lamina and turbulent flow in general lamina is a slow flow very slow flow whereby the higher the flow we call it as a turbulent in between we call it as a transition so this is the example this is we call it as a laminar flow 
whereby the flow is slow we can see the 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 flow is much more uh, very very high order whereby in turbulent flow is much more scattered theory of hydrodynamic consider a fluid entering a circular pipe at a uniform velocity so this is a pipe okay so basically the fluid enters from here so this is your entrance okay so because of the no slip condition the flow particles in the layer in contact with the surface of the pipe come to a complete stop so this layer also cause the fluid particle in the adjacent layers to slow down gradually as a result of friction to make up for this velocity reduction the velocity of the fluid at the mid section of the pipes has to increase to keep the mass flow rate through the pipe constant so as a result the velocity gradients develop along the pipes so the study of liquid in motion is called hydrodynamics so this motion from entrance to the middle of the pipe we call it as a hydrodynamics so this is the entrance this is the early stage of the entrance whereby the norm the velocity boundary layer is started to uh, make a shape which is we have a uh, it viscous region here and the velocity in the middle are much more uh, uniform so compared to the in the middle whereby this is the fully, de fully developed region so this uh, the maximum velocity is much more higher compared to near the wall so this region higher the the, the the shape we call it as a fully developed so we have many terms of hydro theory many terms in hydrodynamics first we call it as a velocity boundary layer so the term velocity, velocity boundary layer we focus on the region of flow in which the effect of the viscous shearing force caused by free velocity are felt boundary layer region the viscous effect and the velocity change are significant irrotational irrotational core of flow region the frictional effect are negligible and the velocity remain essentially essentially constant in the radial direction hydrodynamic entrance region the region from the pipe inlet to the point at which the boundary layer merges at the center line hydrodynamic entry length the length of this region so hydrodynamic entry length x hydrodynamic Develop, developing flow the flow in the entrance region this is the region where the velocity flow file develop so this is the flow file start to develop in the early stage the velocity is uniform fully developed when both the velocity flow file and the normalized temperature profile remain unchanged so this is the fully developed where your velocity profile and temperature profile remains unchanged for the entire entire piping so the velocity profile in the fully developed region is parabolic in laminar flow and somewhat flatter or fuller in turbulent flow due to eddy motion and more vigorous mixing in the radial direction 
for fully developed region, the mean average velocity in laminar pipe flow is one half of the maximum velocity, or it can be written as the maximum velocity is two velocity, which is your max velocity is half in the normal velocity. So consider fluid flow in the hydrodynamic entrance of a region. So this is your something like this entry region. So the the wall shear stress is the highest at the pipe inlet where the thickness of the boundary layer is zero <coughs> and decrease gradually to the fully developed value as shown in the figure. So in the entrance, the wall shear stress, the resistance near the wall, resistance near the wall is higher compared to at the middle. So this portion, the fully developed, we call it as a length. So shear stress, a force per unit area acting parallel to to an infinitesimal surface element. Shear stress is primarily caused by friction between fluid particles due to fluid viscosity. Therefore, the pressure drop is higher in the entrance region of a pipe, and the effect of the entrance region is always to increase the average friction factor for the entire pipe. This increase can be significant for short pipes but negligible for long ones. In laminar flow, the hydrodynamic entry length is given approximately as length per diameter near to equivalent to 0.05 Reynolds number whereby the hydrodynamic entry length for turbulent flow can be approximate as length per diameter 1.359 Reynolds number to the power of 1 fourth 1 over 4 so laminar flow sometimes known as smooth streamline flow or viscous flow and highly ordered motion. It occurs when a fluid flow in parallel layer with no disruption between the layer. In fluid dynamics, laminar flow is a flow regime characterized by high momentum diffusion and low momentum convection. In non-scientific term, laminar flow is smooth while turbulent flow is rough. So this is the example of laminar flow whereby the velocity of the fluid is smaller, much more smaller compared to turbulent flow. So this is the example of turbulent flow. So turbulent flow is a fluid regime characterized by flux velocity fluctuation and highly disordered. Turbulent cause the formation of eddies of many different length scales. Most of the kinetic energy of the turbulent motion is contained in a large scale structures. So this is the example. So this is lamina, the entry region. So we have a lamina flow. In the middle, we have transition. So near to the uh, much more uh, length from the entrance so the fluid goes to turbulent flow so how we differentiate between lamina and turbulent flow so we use Reynolds number so Reynolds number is a dimensionless number we use as a guideline to differentiate between lamina and turbulent. Normally, when we are dealing with flow or fluid or anything or liquid that flow, so 
if we want to know the characteristic of the flow, either is a lamina or turbulent, we will use Reynolds number. So Reynolds number is the ratio of initial force, initial force to viscous force. They are used to characterize different flow regime such as lamina or turbulent. So this is the very important dimensionless number. The transition from lamina to turbulent flow depend on the geometry, surface roughness, flow velocity, surface temperature, and type of the fluid. So basically, in general, the formula for the number is initial initial force divided by vicious force, rho Vd over mu. Mu is your dynamic viscosity. Rho is your density. V is velocity. D is your length of geometry. If in if in uh, flow in a pipe, so D is your diameter. So dynamic viscosity is also known as absolute viscosity is the measurement of the fluid internal resistance to flow while kinematic viscosity refer to the ratio of dynamic viscosity to density so this is the portion we call it as a kinematic viscosity so your kinematic viscosity is dynamic viscosity divided by density so for flow through a non-circular pipe, the Reynolds number is based on the hydraulic diameter, dH. So defined as so dH is four times the surface area, area of the non-circular pipe divided by P. Sorry, A is the cross-sectional area and P is your perimeter. So, dH depends on the uh, types of uh, shape. For circular pipe, dH, we have this formula. For square duct, you have this formula. And for rectangular pipes, we have this type of formula. So, in certain, in certainly, it's desirable to have precise value of a knot number from lamina transitional and turbulent flow but this is not the case in practice this is because the transition from lamina to turbulent flow also depend on the degree of disturbance of the flow by surface roughness pipe vibration and also fluctuation in a flow under most practical condition the flow in a circular pipes is characterized under Reynolds number as Reynolds number below than 2300 we consider as lamina flow 2300 between 4000 we call it as a transitional flow and Reynolds number above 4000 is turbulent flow characteristic of flow in a pipes so this type of flow known as internal flow which the pipe is assumed to be completely filled with the fluid. The fluid flow in a pipe may be lamina or turbulent depending on the Reynolds number. So this is the characteristic of Reynolds number. Below than 2300, we call it as a lamina. In between 2300 to 4000, transitional flow, and above 4000, it's a, we consider as a turbulent flow. So, this is the tables for characteristic of lamina and turbulent flow in the pipes and ducting. So, for feasible characteristic, the lamina normally flow, flow the layer parallel to boundary. But for turbulent, we have a very chaotic chaotic velocity fluctuation.
and the Renault number for Lamina is below 2300 for Turbulent is much more higher is more than 4000 so basically Lamina is a four is a small for molecular diffusion and Turbulent is large normally for large scale eddies okay so analysis flow in a circular path starting from the entry region so the flow started to begin and up to the fully developed region so the entrance region can be represented by entrance lengths LH we have discussed this before so the length of the lamina per diameter of the uh, circular pipes is somewhere within 0 0.5 0 0.05 Reynolds number for turbulent is around 1.359 Reynolds number to the power of quarter so after the after the flow is fully developed the slope become constant and the pressure drop is directly caused only by viscous effect so this is the pressure difference fully developed so this is the entrance conic length this is the region between the entrance and the fully developed so we have pressure difference so by using the Bonoli equation with losses the pressure value at all position along the same pipe can be calculated something like this so we move on into the example sample problem 5.1 sample problem 5.1 oil of density 860 kg per meter cube has a kinematic viscosity of 40 times 10 to the power of minus 6 meters meter square per second calculate the critical velocity when it flow flows in a pipe of 50 millimeters diameter okay Sample problem 5.1 Right, so the critical velocities are the velocities that divided the flow regimes between lamina and tubulin. Okay, so basically the critical is in between Which is we will determine either is a lamina or turbulent flow of the fluid in the Part. So basically, given directly the uh, density rho is at 860 kg per meter cube and also kinematic viscosity, kinematic viscosity 40 times 10 to the power of minus 6 meter square per second and also we have the diameter is 50 millimeter all right and knowing that the kinematic viscosity is also the kinem mu over rho all right dynamic viscosity over uh, density okay so therefore your dynamic viscosity is density times kinematic viscosity alright so for laminar flow lamina flow we know that the Reynolds number 
is below 2300 and not number okay thus we should know we should calculate first what is the Reynolds number so Reynolds number rho average velocity times your diameter times your dynamic viscosity so here we can change with here dynamic velocity so we have velocity diameter per okay so as its flow as its laminar flow it should be below 2300 okay so for laminar flow the critical if let's say in this example it's in the laminar flow so the velocity at laminar flow is Reynolds number times kinematic viscosity over diameter so we have 2300 times 1300 times kinematic velocity 40 times 10 to the power of minus 6 meter per second divided by diameter 0 0.05 meter okay so this to the power of four. okay so uh, so we have answers in meter per second so that is your answers for laminar flow let's say if the flow are in turbulent flow turbulent flow so we know that the Reynolds number is higher than 4000 Reynolds number so basically the average velocity vm is similar Reynolds number times dynamic viscosity eh, kinematic viscosity times diameter so we have 4000 times 40 to the power minus 6 meter square per second over 0 0.055 meter so we have an answer meter meter per second okay so compare compared between the turbulent flow and the laminar flow so you know that which is critical so from here the answer for turbulent flow is this is your critical point <coughs> critical velocity and for laminar this is your critical velocity okay all right thank you sample problem 5.2 sample problem 5.2 consider a water flow in a pipe having a diameter of 25 millimeter which is intended to fill a 0 0.5 liter container calculate a the minimum time required if the flow is laminar b the maximum time required if the flow is turbulent given directly the dynamic viscosity mu is 1.15 times 10 to the power of minus 3 kg per meter dot second okay 
5.2 Given directly In the question Is the diameter of Pipe We have a pipe Okay So this is your diameter Okay So the diameter is 25 millimeter is also same with 0 0.025 meter okay and the container volume is 0 0.5 liter and also uh, we have given directly the kinematic a uh, dynamic viscosity dynamic viscosity 1.15 times 10 to the power of minus 3 kg per meter second okay all right so knowing that unit conversion 1000 liter is equal to 1 meter cube and density of water as the liquid used in this example is water so density of the water is 1000 kg per meter cube so for volume 0 0.5 liter we need to change into a uh, meter cube times liter 1 liter 1 sorry 1000 liter 1 meter cube so 0 0.5 divided by 1000 we got uh, 0. Point, okay, sorry 5 times 10 to the power of minus 4 meter cube okay so proceed with the question the minimum time minimum time so as the question also if the flow is lamina so knowing that lamina so from here we know that the Reynolds number this is the key item is 2300 all right so if the the flow is uh, turbulent so it's a uh, run out number 4000 and above so for minute uh, for lamina we have 2300 so rearrange the equation so run out number is also rho vm over d over mu okay so from here we can know what is the mean velocity okay so rearrange mean velocity okay so we have 2300 mu over density times your diameter so you can calculate by yourself so you got your answers meter per second so that is the velocity the minimum time required so from the velocity the velocity vm you have you got your answers before this meter per second so minimum time
so volume flow rate v dot volume flow rate v dot is in units meter cube per second v dot okay is velocity vm times your area okay so here we have vm vm unit meter per second times area 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 of the parts okay so here it should be meter square so meter times meter meter cube second so same units all right same units okay okay so from here the volume we have so substitute the area times area area is pi d square over 4 so as your d is 0 0.025 meter substitute so your v dot you got your answers in meter cube over second okay so here put in okay so your diameter you put in here okay solve this you can find what is your volume flow rate okay so that is for a for b same procedure with a sorry this is volume so uh, this is only the volume so we need the time time required okay so the time is is in second second so from volume for it we have time we have time so volume units in meter cube divided by volume flow rate we have meter cube per second so cancel out we have time so the volume given directly 5 liter we have convert times 10 to the power of minus 4 meter cube divided by what is your volume okay meter cube per second so cancel out so we have your answers will be in second so that is your final answers okay all right so for b minimum time required and the flow is turbulent okay same method the method is almost similar but in the Reynolds number we have rho vm d over mu is 4000 because it's in the turbulent condition so from here we can determine what is the mean velocity so 4000 times mu over rho d so you got your answers in meter square Okay, 
and then determine volume flow rate determine volume flow rate so volume flow rate is uh, velocity times area so we have your answers the area still the same pi d squared over 4 so d is 0 0.025 meter okay so you can see. so the unit is meter square okay so meter cube per second then the time so t in second is v velocity sorry volume over v dot so here we have meter cube over meter cube per second so the velocity is remain the same so 10 to the power of 4 meter cube over v dot what is your v dot put it here so your v dot will put it here so you got your answers in second so here the unit is meter cube over second so you got your unit in second all right okay thank you